Before I get into my review of the second Chronicles of Thomas Covenant, let me say that I'm trying to keep these videos spoiler free, so I won't be discussing specific plot points or outcomes from the books. I hope it doesn't hamper your enjoyment of these videos. I'm Bridger, and welcome to the Library Letter. Three years after the publication of the first Chronicles of Thomas Covenant the Unbeliever, the author, Stephen R. Donaldson, began publishing The Second Chronicles, a trilogy composed of The Wounded Land, The One Tree, and White Gold Wielder. In this second trilogy, Covenant returns from our world to the land to find that 4,000 years have passed and an even more destructive peril endangers it. This time, though, Covenant isn't alone. Accompanying him is a medical doctor, Lyndon Avery, who, like Covenant, has been chosen by a higher power to help save the land. Unfortunately for the readers, Lyndon is just as annoying and frustrating a character as Covenant, if not more so. She's deeply flawed and psychologically scarred by childhood traumas, and she is prone to untimely bouts of indecision, self-absorption, and low self-esteem. The story arc is similar to that of the first Chronicles. A quest is mounted, involving the newcomers to the land in an effort to save the world. Along the way, they explore parts of the land not previously known or visited and encounter inhabitants who aid or impede their journey to varying degrees. Well, so much for the story synopsis. So what do I think about this second trilogy? Well, I have mixed feelings about it. The annoying flaws found in the first Chronicles are both multiplied and amplified in the second Chronicles. Instead of having just one unlikable main character, now there are two annoying characters who serve as POVs in the books, and Lyndon, who carries much of the narrative load in The Wounded Land and The One Tree, isn't written nearly as sympathetically as Covenant, and that's saying something considering how unlikable Covenant is. Also the tragic scope of the series widens considerably. In the first trilogy, the terrible consequences arising from a rape that occurs early in Lord Fowl's Bane are a recurring theme throughout the three books. In this second trilogy, Donaldson takes the concept of rape and makes it a metaphorical rather than a literal focus of the story. He repeatedly describes the terrible harm inflicted on the land as a form of rape, and he uses the rape metaphor as well to describe the psychological horror associated with the kind of mind control that some characters are forced to experience. Alas for the reader, the amount of suffering experienced by nearly everyone and everything in the books approaches overkill through tiresome repetition, particularly in The Wounded Land. Also, Donaldson's writing is less polished in this second trilogy. There's more fat in his writing, more pointless and redundant exposition more repetitive interior monologues that add little new depth to or understanding of the characters, entire chapters that don't seem to serve much purpose except as filler material, and there's increased reliance on archaic flowery language that does more to conceal meaning than reveal it. His writing style had some of those flaws in the first trilogy, but to a much lesser degree that I didn't find distracting. His publisher, Henry Holt and Company, clearly had a lot more editorial control over the first Chronicles. Unfortunately, the tremendous success of the first trilogy likely empowered Donaldson to resist publisher input into the second trilogy, which, in my opinion, would have benefited greatly from tighter editing. However, despite those shortcomings, I still really enjoyed the second Chronicles, and I would definitely recommend it. The emotional payoff, especially in the third book, was quite satisfying to me. Many of the supporting characters are truly memorable and make you want to spend more time with them. Again, anything to do with the giants is worth savoring, and the Harakai provide emotional heft as well. In fact, the end of the Second Chronicles really feels like the end of the story of Thomas Covenant, and if you choose to stop reading the Covenant series after book six, it would feel complete. The characters find closure. Of course, I could also say much the same thing about the first trilogy. It's a self-contained story with a beginning, middle, and end, but it's also just open-ended enough 
to allow Donaldson to write this second trilogy. Thus, although I consider the first Chronicles to be essential reading for fans of fantasy fiction, I can't really say the same about the second Chronicles. The second Chronicles of Thomas Covenant is a very entertaining read, and it has some truly standout character moments and plot developments. But it also has some notable flaws. If you enjoyed the first trilogy, you'll probably like the second one, because the overall story and character arcs are very similar and very satisfying. On the other hand, if you appreciate the artistic intent of the first trilogy, but struggle to actually enjoy it, then the second trilogy is probably not for you. The appealing aspects of the two trilogies are comparable, but the frustrating elements are much more pronounced in the second Chronicles. For me, the enjoyable aspects outweigh the frustrating ones, but I recognize that other readers might feel differently. I hope these thoughts and impressions are helpful to you. I'll be continuing this review of the Chronicles of Thomas Covenant the Unbeliever in my next video, which discusses the most recent and final Chronicles. I'll provide a link to it in the video description text below. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please click the like button or post something in the comment section. Please also consider subscribing to this channel by clicking on the library letter icon in the bottom right corner. Thanks for watching.